Welcome back, friends. Dan Vega here, your friendly neighborhood Spring developer advocate. And today, we are talking about Spring Security Configuration. Now, there are often times when I show some code examples that look like this, and I get a lot of questions around what is that syntax that you're using? Why are you using it? Are you just trying to confuse me? No, I am not. I am just trying to show you a different version of the same code. So we're going to look at two different uh, configurations today that basically do the exact same thing. One uses kind of the older uh, chaining style. One uses the new Lambda DSL. I just want you to be aware that there are two ways to do this so that if you see either of these configurations, you know exactly what's going on. The easiest way to do this is jump in, create a new project, and walk through some code. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. All right, so here I am at start.spring.o. We're going to create a new Spring Boot project. We're going to use Java. We're going to use Maven. We are going to use the latest version of Spring Boot, which at the time of this recording is 3.0.4. We're going to fill in some metadata about the project. I'm going to say dev.danvega. We're going to call this hello security. And we're going to use Java 17. Now I need a few dependencies, one of which is going to be web and the other is going to be security. So with that in place, we can go ahead and generate our project. We'll download a zip. I'll open it up in my favorite IDE, which you should know by now is an IntelliJ IDE Ultimate Edition, but you can open it up in whatever text editor or IDE you're most productive in. Let's do it. All right, so here I have my Hello Security application open up in IntelliJ. I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna create a couple of controllers so we can write some configuration around that. So I'm gonna create a new controller. Uh, let's go ahead and put this in the controller package and we'll call this the, uh, let's call it the home controller. So in the home controller, all I'm gonna do is create a rest controller and we'll create a simple get mapping for uh, slash. And this is just going to return a hello spring security. All right, so now that we have that in place, we need one more controller. I'm going to create a new Java class. We're going to call this the post controller. And this is going to be similar. This is going to be a rest controller. We're going to have a request mapping at slash API slash posts. And we're going to just create a simple uh, method that returns all the posts. All it's going to really do is return a string for now. And we can say that this is a git mapping and that will work. Okay, so we have our home controller. We have our post controller. I have a situation where in Spring Security, I want to allow anyone to hit this home controller, but I want to go ahead and lock down this um, to a particular role, and then anything else that's in the application should be locked down because Spring Security is indeed secure by default. And what does that mean? That means if we go ahead and run this application, you can see that we have a default user with a generated password, and basically everything in our application is locked. And if we go here and we try to hit uh, HTTP localhost 8080, we are going to get a 401 saying you can't uh, access that. Everything is locked down by default. So cool, good start, good start. Um, now what we need to do is we need to add our own configuration. So the way we would, we would do this is we would come up and create a new Java class. I might put this in a security folder and I'm gonna call this security config and this is going to be a class and this is going to be a configuration class. Um, and we also might enable web security. So this is kind of the newer way of uh, creating a security configuration. If you're used to the older way of uh, extending the web security configure adapter, go ahead and check out some of, my, um, some of the other videos on my channel. We kind of talk about how this is the new component model and this is really what we're gonna use going forward. Now to do this, what we will do is we will create a new bean and this bean will be of type uh, security filter chain, and we'll call this security filter chain. And this is going to take our HTTP security. We'll call this HTTP. And at the end of the day, we're going to return HTTP.build, which we'll throw an exception for. So now that we have that, um, what we want to do is start talking about 
the uh, chaining approach to our security configuration. So this is the kind of older style that you might see, but again, very valid. And if you have it, there's no reason to change it. Um, so what you might see is you might see a HTTP dot authorize HTTP requests, right? And then you can come in here and say, okay, let's use a request matcher. So we wanna use a request matcher to match on our home route. So this is our slash route. And what we wanna do is we want to allow anyone who hits that access to it. Now, if you're kind of new to Spring Security, these the order of these matchers is very important. So we wanna make sure that we kind of allow at the top and block as we go down. So then I might have another one uh, for request matchers. I might wanna look for anything under API slash post. And what I might wanna do is I might wanna make sure that they have the role of say admin to access that. Finally, I wanna go ahead and say any other request, I wanna make sure that they are authenticated, right? So once I've done that, this is where chaining comes in. I wanna say, okay, after I've done that, here are some other things that I need to do in my configuration. I might want to uh, disable CSERF, so I can come in here and say that. And then I also want to set up my authentication mechanism. In this case, I'm just going to use um, HTTP basic, right? So that looks good. And then at the end of the day, I'll just build that and return that. So this is definitely one approach that you've seen. Let's see if this works. Let's go ahead and run this application again. And once it starts up, we still have a um, security password here, but we know that we should not have to be logged in to hit um, just the root endpoint here. So let's go back to our terminal, run that same command again. And indeed, we are able to hit that. We get a 200 back and we get the hello spring security. Now, if we try and go to slash API slash posts, you'll see that we get the 401 saying, nope, you're not allowed here. And hey, you should be authenticating using HTTP basic. So cool, so our security configuration is working, but what I wanna do is just kind of show you uh, the other approach that you might be seeing. So I'm gonna put a comment here so that you have this in the final source code, which you can find in the description below. This will just kind of give you a blog post that talks more about the Lambda DSL, just in case you haven't seen this before. So I'm gonna create another bean here. We're gonna call the, this is gonna be the same thing of type security filter chain. And we'll just call this security filter chain two. Wow, that's really good. Um, we'll just go ahead and use that because uh, instead, actually let's just start from, let's start from the beginning. Um, this is GitHub Copilot at, at work, of course. So we'll kind of let that go. Um, and what I wanna do here is I'm going to return HTTP.build and in here, I'm going to do a couple other things. So the first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use authorized HTTP requests. But if we go into kind of the source for this, you'll see that there's two uh, methods here. So one that does not take any arguments and one that does. So up here you can see authorize HTTP request does not take an argument. That's the one we used earlier. That uh, returns a, um, a expression. Yeah, it, it returns a configure at the end of the day. Um, but then there is the one that we are going to use here, which takes in a customizer. And so that's the one that we're gonna be dealing with here. This takes in a customizer. So um, let's go back to this actually. If we look at customizer, this is a functional interface. There's a single abstract method in here called customize, which takes a type T. So knowing that there is, knowing that that customizer is an interface, that allows us to use a Lambda expression here. So what we could do, we could come in here and say, um, I wanna go ahead and accept that uh, uh, customizer argument. So I'm going to say auth. And if it's just a single line, if all I was doing was one thing, I can just put it in line. I could say auth.any request 
is uh, authenticated. And this is a valid syntax here, but we are going to do a few things. So when we're using multiple lines here uh, with a Lambda expression, we're going to insert these braces here, right? So now that we have these brackets, now we can do multiple things in here. We can use that auth and we could say, hey, for request matchers, so for home, I want to go ahead and permit all, all right? I also want to set something up for the request matchers of API slash posts, and that's going to have a role of admin. And I also want to make sure that any request is authenticated. So this is the different syntax that you're seeing from up here. So kind of, again, now they both do the same thing, but here is where the big difference comes in. If we look at the uh, method here, this is going to return HTTP security, whereas the one above it, or the one that we used before, does not. So you see my little note here that says, in the Lambda DSL, there's no need to chain configuration op options using the AND. We don't need to do that because the HTTP security instance is automatically returned for further configuration. So we don't need to say and down here. We can just come down here and say, all right, for CSERF, we're actually going to um, HTTP configure dot disable. And then we also want to set up uh, HTTP basic. So we can say HTTP basic with defaults and we are done. So because we don't have to use that and method, I think you get a little bit cleaner of uh, configuration here. Obviously less lines of code, but this is just a minimal configuration. When we get into like real world configurations, there is a lot that's going on and you have to keep chaining, chaining these together with and, whereas with the Lambda DSL, you do not. So I think that's really all I wanted to show here. Um, let's go ahead and double check that this is still working. I'm just gonna comment this one out. Uh, we can use multiple security configurations if we set an order. I just wanna, uh, for simple use case here, I'm just gonna run this with this security configuration. So same thing, let's go ahead and check home. That works, and if we check posts, we are getting a 401, you need to log in for that. So cool. So I just wanted to show that off. I thought, you know, again, I'm getting, I've been getting a lot of questions around what is that syntax that you're using. Um, that is the using a Lambda. Um, so this is the Lambda DSL. And for me, it's just a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more concise. Uh, so I enjoy using that. So, hey, if you found value in this, do me a favor, friends. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding.